there's a big problem, right, with unmanaged conflict in the workplace. So this program is for you if you have conflict in the workplace or you foresee having conflict in the workplace or if you just want to know about how to use conflict creatively. So we're going to cover like how unmanaged conflict costs money for you and your company, how employees can refuse to work together, um, how leaders avoid leading during times of conflict and how conflict can fuel creativity. So all right, so one of the things, one of the sub problems of the big problem is employees like refusing to work together. So I have some items that I've seen from working in the industry um, over the years. So like lack of communication, which re results in poor product design, actually can go up to physical aggression or property damage. All right, so this is like one of the one of the issues is that basically like they um, not knowing not knowing about conflict styles. It's like basically you put a bunch of people in the workplace. You think everybody's going to act and communicate the same, or you expect them to act or communicate the same, but they actually have very different conflict styles and communication styles. So I know Michael um, is familiar with assessment tools. So yeah. this, this is something that. Um, is near and dear to my heart. Um, so these, some of these, these are some of the uh, assessment tools that are used in, in the conflict analysis. So Thomas Kilman, Myers-Briggs, I um, also recently used the, the U.S. Institute of Peace for uh, a program that I, that I led. Um, see that, I don't know how easy it is to read on your screen. Um, but basically there's competing, collaborating, compromising, avoiding and accommodating. So just if you could guess what would be your what would be your highest or lowest one? Well I would probably be my first would probably be uh, competing because you know I win all the time so just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then probably collaborate with the second one. I mean, you know, eventually you got to work with other people to get stuff done. Um, I would say my highest would be collaborating and my lowest would be competing. I do the other, the other three <laughs> on occasion. Um, in worst case, I'm avoiding and just, that's not good. I know that's not good, <laughs> but in best case, I'm collaborating. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's not a good or bad. I mean, there's definitely a time. Um, <laughs> you know, avoiding can and can give you time to put the full situation together. And hey, yeah. um, uh, you know, competing sometimes things have to get done. I mean, you have to yell at your kid to get out of the road. You're not going to accommodate or collaborate with him about getting out of the road. I mean, it's something that my way or the highway has to be yeah. has to be enforced. So definitely there's a use for all five. So um, this is a situation that when we're talking about leadership, this really comes into play because leaders don't know how to lead. And, and a lot of times they do avoid. Uh, you see that kind of just passing the buck, that expression passing the buck, or they'll let another employee just kind of steamroll them to get things done. They don't want to pull back and try to collaborate. Um, you know, or this, or they're dictatorial. They come in and just say, well, get it done, and you're kind of left with no guidance. So using conflict coaching in the workplace, you can um, actually have a coach work with the people who are at odds. Uh, you could coach the project leaders, the managers, whomever, on how to handle this internally uh, on like a specific issue, or you can get general coaching to come in and actually do coach training conflict coach training um, on a regular basis or periodic basis. So I am certified with the ICF, International Coaching Federation, as a conflict coach, um, as well as being a mediator. And I've just relaunched my online mediation practice. I know y'all know me as a coach, um, but I figured uh, there was a great need right now. So I relaunched that um, about two weeks ago. But, um, anyway, so you can have conflict coaching trainings at your, your workplace. Um, again, like, I, like somebody could actually come in and do the whole, like Thomas Kilman, half the year full day program. 
uh, if that's something you wanted to do. And now if you do have an active dispute between employees or between employees and third parties, you may actually want to go ahead and hold a mediation. Just actually have an, go ahead and have a confidential mediation. Um, go online now. Um, if something you really want to do with the EEOC complaint, you definitely want to have a, medi a mediator come in. So do we have any questions at this point? This is a question stop. <laughs> Do you usually do these type of conflict coaching sessions with clients at the client location or do you prefer a neutral location outside the building? Um, that's a good question. If, if I am coaching, it depends. It depends if, okay. if we're actually having something where there's going to be parties at odds, we would, we would want to do a neutral location. Um, now we do everything online and we, we want all the parties to be separate. We want everybody to have a separate room to, so that we don't have any misunderstanding. We yeah. don't have any like internal conversation that we can't that we can't address. Okay. So I also love conflict art. So I always put this in here because conflict can fuel creativity. So uh, the piece on the left is from the Creative Conflict Wisdom blog, and it's called The West Bank. Um, there's no artist cited on this. I looked all over, uh, but it's from a, from a blog, uh, and it's current, current piece of art. And then the one on the right is called Ideological Conflict uh, by Anthony Pilbro. It's from 1954. And so, like, you're each going to say nothing, something, anything, and it's kind of like rock, paper, scissors. So okay. when you get to the anything, each one yells out the first thing you think of, like dog, coffee mug, chew. So okay. you yell out the thing. And then you debate for about two minutes why your item beats the other person's item. Okay. okay. And, then, and then after about two minutes, take a deep breath, stretch, take 30 seconds, and then you'll have to, you'll have to pretend to ask yourselves questions. So what would happen if you had an audience group they would assist you in engaging in dialogue by like asking questions. So if you ask questions and listen to the answers, so basically the audience is acting in like the coach position to see if you can come to an agreement. Awesome, so what did y'all think of the exercise? Well, I definitely won, so you know. <laughs> I don't think. I don't know about that. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Did it was good. I think we okay. agreed that both items were just as important, but in different ways. In different ways. There you go. Nice. Oh, look. see, we ended up. What would that be? Compromising or collaborating? That'd be kind of compromising. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a little bit of both. I mean, it depended if you both you if you if you are going to go ahead and incorporate them into a project, or you just agree to agree, or you could still agree, you could agree to disagree. Um, very interesting. Good. So, did you have any other questions overall? I know there's no questions in the chat box, but that doesn't mean you don't have any. <laughs> so we both just um like picked a random item and then argued our points and kind of went back and forth as to why our item was more important or more valuable and kind of pointed out the downsides of each other's items. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's something that you do in a mediation too, is you kind of pick holes in the, in, in both parties' arguments. So you're like, well, if you went to court on this, you know, what would you, where do you see? So. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. So a quote, you always have a quote in a, in a presentation. So this is from the War of Art, which I really like. It has 400 quotes, actually. It's a really short book. It's like maybe six or seven chapters. And when I looked up the quotes, it was, um, I was actually looking for a different quote, but it, it didn't say what I wanted it to say. So. <laughs>